Welcome to a special edition of What Can He Do? What Can He Do After Hours? Ooh. <laughs> I have some special guests in the building tonight, I guess. They can't see you. You're a friend. I'd like to introduce my son here, Javon Gilbert, a.k.a. AKA, AKA what? What do you go by now? It used to be like Jeff Moore or J Tron. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't really go by too much these days. Red Stick Ninja has the night off. But anyway, my son here, Javon, is actually a prison guard at a prison in Huntsville, Texas, I believe, right? Yeah. I'm going to leave that, that unit undisclosed just in case they decide that they want to watch this later. Yeah, you don't want to get in trouble. I don't even know if you're supposed to be doing talking about this on video, but I'll tag somebody else's name in it so they get in trouble. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's a prison guard. Is that the right right uh, name of your occupation? Correction officer, prison guard. Yeah, essentially. Inmate wrangler. Babysitter. So what would you say would be the biggest things if you just got locked up for something and had to go to the big house? What would be like the, the first five things you would tell somebody like to try and survive through those first couple weeks? Uh, that's, that's a little difficult. They always have that cliche to go in there and find the biggest, baddest looking dude and completely just whoop the shit out of him. I don't even know if that works or not. I've never seen anybody do it. First day in there, just fire! Just the biggest dude they see, yeah. just... I mean, I, I heard stories about people that just knew they weren't going to make it off the bus, so as soon as they got off, they just picked the first correctional officer and just... Because they knew it would get them locked up. Try not to get locked up with everybody else. Yeah, usually just chill out, I guess. Trying to, I guess, scope out the scene and figure out who's who. Depending if you're gang affiliated or not, you might already have some ties by the time you got in there. Well, it would definitely be like a big no-no for somebody that's never been locked up before and you're telling this dude, all right, man, you gotta, uh, you need to listen to me, take my advice on some things before you go in. I say one of the first things that you just don't do, just call someone a bitch, whether you're playing or not. People don't play with that bitch word in prison. Yeah, I heard that's like, so if you say bitch to somebody, that's it. It's on. Yeah, that's about right. Don't just go around uh, recklessly eyeballing people. I heard war stories of inmates apparently just seeing somebody looking at them the wrong way, and they just, that's it. No more talking after that. Just don't go around trying to pick fights, whether you're big, small. I feel like you got a decent fight game because I learned very quickly that as good as your fight game is, there's always someone out there with a better fight game. So, just try and keep it mellow, keep your head on a swivel, lay low for the most part. That's why I never understood the find the biggest dude, biggest baddest dude, and take him out as soon as you get there, because I feel like that would be me getting my ass kicked by somebody the minute I get to jail. <laughs> That's about right. Anything else for somebody that might be looking forward to getting locked up? Just make yourself useful, that way people feel like they can get something out of you, whether you can make something, whether it's food, you can fix radios and whatever shit else that needs to be fixed, or whether you can jerry-rig them to get the stations that no one else can get. Just something useful, that way people actually either will pay you for it, or not want to whoop your ass later because you have something to offer. Whether you can make speakers or whatever stuff that they're really not supposed to be having, just make sure you have some good connections. So just try and blend in and use your skills, help out, pitch in. Yeah, bow hunting skills, computer Both. hacking skills. Okay. So any other advice for somebody that might, may or may not be looking forward to getting locked up here in the near future? Maybe they found out they were delinquent on some taxes or something and they're like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm about to get locked up. I need to bone up on my, my prison survival skills so they're tuning in right now. What can he do? After hour special. After hour special. Is, is it necessary that one joins a gang? I guess that's a good question I should probably ask you because I kind of feel like that's a stigma about prison is like you're going to have to join a gang or something to make it. I mean, I don't really talk to these, these inmates to figure out their personal stories. I know I probably have dealt with some gang affiliated inmates in the past and probably better if they don't say anything to me. I, usually gets you wound up in SEG or STG, whatever whatever kind of correctional facility you're in, it's not really good to be gang affiliated. I know some people get clicked up with whether with their gangs or their cliques, 
two separate things. I didn't even know that till I started. Those are two separate things. Clicks and clicks and gangs. Actually, two separate things. Like we don't actually classify all gangs as gangs. I guess some gangs are really small, so they're classified as clicks. I can't even think of any off top. I know we got some big ones, you know, your typical Bloods and your Crips. And I know some people just get clicked up based on their, their race, whatever race they're a part of. They usually don't go around saying these things to the guards, obviously, because that's something that we red flag. We red flag tattoos or we red flag all that kind of thing that makes it look like you're gang affiliated because we keep track of all of that. So for them to, I guess, be a part of a gang, that, that might offer them a little sense of security knowing that you're rolling with the group most times, but at the same time, it can also make you a target. So I, me personally, I just try and lay as low as possible and just make myself a nice little, little circle. That way I know what's going on, but other than that, I'm not getting involved with a whole lot of gang stuff. Unless I absolutely have to to survive. That's a pretty wise decision, probably. Thing you think you might, might have left out, a guy wants to know, look, dude, I'm getting locked up in a couple of weeks. I ain't never been locked up. I don't want to be nobody's bitch. Can you help me out? What kind of advice? Cheeks. Cracking you cheeks. You don't want to be cracking cheeks. <laughs> yeah, anything else you might have left off that you want to add on to that? I will say that hygiene is, is a big issue when it comes to the the celly conflicts that usually go around is people usually mad because you're stuck in there for however many hours of the day with another grown-ass man. If you don't wash and you just smell like one gigantic ball of must. Obviously, they don't want no parts of that. And no, a lot of times I've seen people either get kicked out of their cells or heard of them getting their asses beat. Uh, another thing that I would often heard of is, you know, both dudes being in the cell at the same time and one dude's laying down and he's going to town on himself and the other dude just feels disrespected. Because it's like, come on, dude, I'm right here. I'm li less than two feet away from you and you're just yanking it right next to me. I'm not, I'm not appreciating it. And they start whooping their ass over that too. So, uh, yeah, that's two reasons right there. Stay clean and, you know, don't go yanking stuff that doesn't need to be yanked around the wrong people. Don't be yanking or stanking. <laughs> yanking or go. stanking. That could be like a new motto. Don't be yanking or stanking. Right on. I think that's pretty good. We're not going to keep you here all night. We know you got to get back onto the sub blocks and uh, do some counts. Do you want to tell anybody any fucked up crazy stories real quick before you go? Uh, uh, things that's happened to you. I know you've been doing this coming up on two years now, so very proud of my son. Two years as a correctional officer. The the craziest story to me that's actually personally happened to me was about almost four o'clock in the morning doing doing a count on a it's more of a a transient higher custody level block and as I'm making my way down the runs on like two row and I'm walking past the cell and I'm looking in the cells making sure everybody's good and marking them off on my little piece of paper and as I, I remember walking up I think it was 217 obviously I just wasn't paying enough attention like I should have been because the dude was just standing right in front of, like right next to his door I didn't think much of it at the time, and right when I went to go turn my head to ask him, you know, what bunk that he was assigned to, just face full of urine, all uh, to the to the side of the chops. Piss in the face. Yeah, that that was definitely the. Yeah, nah, and I didn't I didn't heard Granddad saying, "Oh, it's better to be pissed off than pissed on," but you know, at that point in time, it's literally both. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine somebody throwing some piss in my face. Uh, be, it was horrible. Ugh. Anything else crazy like that happened since then? I know you told me about that the day it happened or the day after. Uh, I know you've been said you you've adjusted pretty fairly well to uh, your job and that's pretty much it. And just trying to trying to talk with respect to these people that have been in here for however long 20, 30, 40 years and have that fine line of. You know, being too hard or being too soft, and you know, you just gotta keep that that straight on, so they know not to fuck with you. But they know at the same time that you're gonna do your job. So if they absolutely have to come to you for something, whether their life's in danger or anything like that, you know, you can handle those kind of situations. Cause uh, at the end of the day, all we all we're supposed to do is count them and make sure that they're living, so they can serve out the rest of their sentence. That's the two most important things that we do. That was said rather eloquently. Eloquently. Yeah. 
pretty dope. Well, I guess that's going to do it for us. We're not going to stay here all night and chat your ear off. This was just a slip-in special edition of What Can You Do After Dark, After Hours, with my son, Javon. I am Kenny G, a.k.a. Milk, a.k.a. Dr. Shoe. And until next time, peace out.